Hi guys, in this video we will have a look at fiber optic cables and the different types of fiber cables as well as the different types of connectors. First we will do a quick introduction on fiber versus copper. So with copper wires, copper wires use electrical currents to transmit data known as electrical pulses and the cables are comprised of multiple strands of copper wires with four pairs of wires twisted together. And the longer the signal travels, the worse the signal becomes, which is known as attenuation. Now with fiber, on the other hand, it uses pulses of light to transmit data, unlike copper wires, which uses electrical currents. It uses light to actually send traffic. The physical attributes of the fiber cable is a glass within the core and has a few of the layers surrounding it as well, such as a jacket, something known as a buffer, and finally cladding which surrounds the fiberglass core itself. And just to compare the two, fiber optic signals can travel much further as they are much less sensitive to noise and electromagnetic interference than copper cables, as fiber is made up of metal. And I'm talking distances of around 80 kilometers or even further with fiber cables, so very, very far. Fiber provides much higher throughput and therefore it's faster than copper as well. And although copper wire is not as fast or can travel as further as fiber, it's still heavily used because it's cheaper than fiber and it's easier to work with. Everyone understands copper and light fiber. If we have a look at the fiber types, grades and connectors, let's first have a look at single mode versus multi-mode fiber types. There is single mode optical fiber and there is multi-mode optical fiber and the two have the use cases. And technically speaking, single mode versus multi mode is to do with how light traverses the fiber. Single mode uses a single mode or single pathway to send light through the core. And whilst with multi mode, the fiber can travel in multiple pathways or modes, and that's where the name comes from multi mode. Looking in a bit more depth between the two, single mode has much thinner core than the multi mode of 9 microns, which is like a hairpiece or even thinner and it's usually used for connections between buildings or WAN connections over long distances and it offers more bandwidth than multi-mode and the cable is usually yellow in colour. Whereas multi-mode has a thicker core diameter of 50 microns unless it's a very old fibre grade of OM1 in which case it's 62.5 microns which is slightly thicker. And with multi-mode, it's used for shorter distances, up to 400 meters approx in length, and is usually an orange or aqua color, and it's cheaper than single mode, and provides less bandwidth. So you typically use single mode for between buildings and very long haul distances on your one connections, and you'd use multi-mode fiber within the building when the uh, distance is up to 400 meters maximum. Now we've also got fiber grades and wavelengths where there are single mode grades and multi mode grades and they mainly differ due to the bandwidth and distance support. So typically the higher the number, for example OM5 will offer more bandwidth and distance than OM2 but let's have a quick look at each one. And looking at the top line we've got OS1 and OS2 which are typically yellow in color and these are single mode fibers and their core is 9 microns so very small compared to multi mode and the difference between OS1 and OS2 is OS1 is a tight buffered construction and it's typically used indoors where OS2 is a loose tube cable construction and is mainly used on the outdoor environment and with OS2 it has much less attenuation than OS1 and supports much higher distances and the second line down is OM1 and OM2 which are usually orange in color and these are multi-mode fibers. OM1, which is legacy and it's very old, has a larger core size of 62.5 microns. The other multi-mode fiber cores are slightly smaller, OM2 to OM5, which are 50 microns in size. Single mode is much smaller than multi-mode, altogether with nine microns. And OM1 supports up to one gig at 275 meters and 10 gig at 33 meters whereas OM2 sports 1 gig at 550 meters and up to 10 gig at 82 meters. Now OM3 is aqua in color and OM3 can do 40 gigabits of bandwidth at 240 meters and it can also do 10 gig at 100 meters 
I know M3 seems to be the most widely used grade of cable today, with OM4 probably being second. Going down, looking at OM4, OM4 has a few colours depending on where you are in the world, but in the UK it's magenta and in the US it's aqua. And with OM4, it can support 100 gig at a maximum distance of up to 150 meters. There's also an OM4 Plus, which is not on the slide, but that allows for approximately 300 meters at 40 gig and 100 gig of bandwidth speeds as well. And finally, looking at the last one is OM5, which is lime green in color. OM5 is known as wide band multimode fiber and is very similar to OM4 in its limitations and is needed in data centers that require short wave division multiplexing. It basically uses some of the features that were designed for single mode and it's fully compatible with OM3 and OM4 fiber grids. Next is probably the most spoken about areas and the most interesting part which is the fiber optic cable connectors because there's quite a few of them and there are new ones being introduced into the market as well. So let's start off with the most uh, common one today. And this is called LC. This connector is the go to fiber connection types used in switches today. The connector is smaller modern and it looks like a smaller version of the older SC connectors. The SC is an older connector type, which is a push and pull fitting, but has been heavily used due to being cheap and easy to work with. And although it's older than the uh, LC connector, it's still used today, especially around on fiber patch panels. The next one is the FC connector. And this is a, a very old connector and isn't installed anymore as much, but you need to know about them just in case you're in a place where these are pre-installed. It's a screw on and screw off fitting, so it's very secure. And if used, it tends to be used between patch panels using single mode fiber connections. Now the ST connector, which is something known as the bayonet locking system, basically it's a twist lock which is also very secure like the FC connector as it locks into place, but it's also more of a legacy connector and used between patch panels and LC and SC connectors tend to be used more often nowadays. And there's now a few other new connectors on the market today, but the one worth mentioning is the MTP or MTO connector types which are used for high density requirements and allow up to 24 fiber optic connections with one breakout connector. So on one side you have got the MTP MTO connector and on the other side you could have 24 LC cables. So this reduces the amount of cables needed to be installed. So it's very efficient that way. And although the MTP and MTO are different manufacturers, they are very similar to one another and both are compatible with each other as well. By the way, MTP and MPO stands for Multi Fiber Termination Push On Connectors. And the reason why I've mentioned them is because I've seen them on the Cisco website. So Cisco and other networking vendors are selling them for their networking products. So they're fully supported. And finally, there is something known as a DAC cable, which stands for Direct Attached Storage. And it's basically the SFP module built into the fiber cable itself. So you're getting the SFP module, the connector and the cable as one piece of kit and it's good for connecting things in the same rack at short distances. For example, if you need an LC DAC cable from one switch to another switch in the same rack, you can just plug uh, both sides in without having to buy the cable and separate connectors, etc. It's all in one. It's an all in one product. So it's uh, very easy that way. Now, just to quickly have a look at a real world example, we've got a Cisco Nexus switch and it sports 96 10 gig copper ports. It then has 6x40 gig Ethernet uplink ports. And the front panel can run at 100 meg, 1 gig, or 10 gig in speed. And what can go into the square little blocks are something known as SFP transceiver modules, which look like this for fiber connections. And this one is for an LC fiber connection, which is pretty much standard for switches. And by the way, you can get copper transceiver modules as well, so not just fiber. So if you run out of copper pots, you can buy the copper modules for these as well. And this is where we can plug the actual fiber cable into, but you need to get the correct type of fiber cable and connector, such as single mode or multi-mode and the connector type, in which in this case, it's an LC connection type on the switch end. And then you need to know what the other side of the fiber cable is, what's the connection. And you might need a different type of connection because for example, the patch panel may only spot ST termination points. 
So then we would need an LC to ST fiber cable as shown in the picture to plug it into the patch panel using an ST connection. And you also need to get the correct size as well. It's very important not to oversize either because otherwise you would have extra cables to wrap around somewhere in your cabinet. So you just have looping cables. So make sure you don't oversize your cables. And at the same time, make sure you're not stretching your cables as well to avoid any damage. And this is just one example of where we would have an LC to ST connection, but you can have any type of connector. If you go on eBay, you can search for ST to FC, for example. So you can get all sorts of uh, cable connectors from one end to the other end. They can be different or they can be the same. Now here are a couple of examples of SFP transceiver modules we can get for the 9300 series Nexus switches. The top one in the table is a 10 gig SFP plus port which sports multi-mode and has a maximum distance of 400 meters. And the next one down the table line is an SFP 10 gig single module that can travel much further up to a distance of 80 kilometers. And the third one in the table is a 40 gig Q SFP module, which has an MPO connection type at the end of it with 150 meters maximum distance. And these are just three examples. You can also get many other 10 gig and 40 gig SFP modules for the Nexus 9300. These are just three examples, but there are lots of other choices. And that's it for this video, guys, on fiber optic cables and different types of connectors. Thanks for watching.